back to Goals Don't Have Feelings with Dr. Stacia Alexander. I have the most awesome privilege of bringing a show that highlights the emotionality of success when not too many people are talking about that. I mean, think about it. We talk about what it means to set goals emotionally, what it takes to actually develop a plan of action to execute those goals, and also what it takes to sustain those goals because success doesn't always come easy and sustaining it may be even harder. So on my show, I talk about the emotionality of success. On today's episode, we're actually going to have a special conversation with James Bush of Bush Counseling Services to discuss how men are actually dealing with the coronavirus. I have been in private practice for over 20 years, owned and operated a group practice in the Dallas Metroplex. As well, I'm the director over a counseling center at a local HBCU. As well, I've authored a couple of books, one of which I use annually at my Goals Are Important workshop under August Accountability. It is a full-color, full-page, extensive workbook to highlight the four quadrants of uh, accountability, which are professional, relationships, self-care, and spiritual. I believe with all of those areas, we can achieve the peace that we're needing if we have high levels of accountability in those four quadrants. Thank you for joining me via your online presence. If you will, not only like, but also share, even think about starting a watch party to invite your friends and family to view this special edition of Goals Don't Have Feelings, where we're actually talking about how men are coping with the quarantine during COVID-19 in the year of 2020. As I said earlier, my special guest for today is James Bush of Bush Counseling Services. He's a licensed professional counselor who's agreed to join me today to talk about how men are handling being in quarantine during COVID-19. James, I've been following you on Facebook and Instagram for quite some time, and I admire how you highlight mental health and how you advocate for mental health on behalf of the minority population. So thank you for joining me. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Let's get right to it. So we're here today for the special edition of Goals Don't Have Feelings, and I have as a special guest, James Bush, who is the owner of Bush Counseling Services. Thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing well today. Well, thanks You're for having doing me. Well. Yes. Why do you hesitate when you say that? What do you mean? What's going on? I don't know. I'm trying to think of something clever to say, but it kind of escaped me. So oh. we'll go along. <laughs> so I reached out to you because I've been following you on Instagram and Facebook, and I really admire how you highlight uh, mental health advocacy and really speaking mm -hmm. as a voice for black men and minority mental health. Mm -hmm. So I want to applaud you on Definitely. that because we need to do Thank that you. more. Can you, let's yes. start out, because sometimes I forget. Let's start out, tell people how they can find you. Uh, you can find me at uh, email of james at bushcounselingservices.com. Um, also, you can find me on IG at Bush Counseling, or you can look at Facebook, Bush Counseling Services, and that's where I am. Um, you can also look at me. I have, uh, I'm part of a Done Sun podcast. We uh, air um, 30 episodes a year. Um, we're right in the middle of our season two, and we're on all popular um, platforms, as well as um, a Facebook Live that I'm beginning to do at the end of the month, which is um, 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 Mind of a Man. And it's just, again, talking about guy stuff from um, a mental health clinician. So what's black. the name of the podcast? <laughs> you didn't say that. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, the Dunn Sun Podcast. D-O-N-E D-O-N-E-S-O-N. The Done Son. Oh, like, I'm done, son? There you go. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay, so I have to look at that. Because, of course, we have more yep. time to listen to all these podcasts and information. Oh, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> so I appreciate you coming on. And the reason I wanted you to Thank come you. on, because I'm kind of watching <clears throat> men in my life, my husband and my son, and even my dad, mm -hmm. think about it, watching how they're navigating yes. this quarantine right. Um, right. COVID-19, all of this, how mm -hmm. we're going with the stay in place. How are you handling it for yourself? Let's start there. I'm saying busy. Uh, I mean, and so from my perspective, uh, it's been a, a refreshing. Um, it's been an opportunity to get some rest because um, last year I hit the ground running. And I, I'm not going to lie. Doc. I was burnt out <laughs> when okay. January 1 hit. Even okay. after I did take like a week off, I was, I was burnt out. And so when this happened, I'm like, Wow, it's an opportunity to you know to take some time for yourself and to uh, you know do a lot more self care. Um, to 
reevaluate, you know, the priority priorities in life and what's going on per se. So that's how I've been getting along. And also too, when you know, when you have those moments of, you know, just down, it's a stillness, that's when you start hearing things. And that's when ideas start popping up. Then mm -hmm. there's not a lot of distractions. So now you start enacting on you know, what you're hearing and, you know, mm -hmm. execution. So that's been very beneficial for me right now. Um, definitely. Um, utilizing telehealth methods to still see clients uh okay. amazingly my telehealth has uh increased exponentially oh, uh, a lot of people are still wanting to keep up with um therapy um especially some of my clients who are married uh, <laughs> being quarantined with somebody you don't like on a, a lockdown is not the recipe man for success <laughs> so mm -hmm. there's a lot to talk about there's a yeah. and um, <clears throat> it's just you learn so much in that because um Everybody has different lives, and uh, when everything stops, mm -hmm. you know, when you have the the the, the clients who they are traveling um, five out of seven days a week, mm -hmm. and they hardly see their significant others, and then not everything has stopped. They come to a halt, and you're faced to deal with the issues of one another. It can be challenging, and it can bring out a lot of stuff that hasn't been discussed uh, previously. So and I'm excited about it. I'm learning a lot. I was talking to a reporter uh, here locally. And I said, I mm -hmm. honestly think that you're going to have more people come into counseling after this quarantine because they're oh, yeah, going to really see the deficits in their family that they, like yeah. you said, if you've been traveling five out of seven days or if you're never home with the kids or you're always sleep when your spouse comes home, this is a wake up call for a lot of people. Yes, it, it definitely, it definitely is. And, um, I mean, we all sometimes need those things because sometimes we're on autopilot and we have the mm -hmm. idea that everything is okay and right. uh, uh, we go along to get along. And right. then it's just that one hiccup or that one speed dump bump that, um, or the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back that highlights everything that necessarily wasn't right in your relationship. Right. Or necessarily even about the individual person, you know, things that you are missing out on. Right. And so <clears throat> moments like these are um, necessary. Now, granted, I, I am not a proponent of anybody being sick or um, anyone losing their life or losing their livelihood of it. But at the same time as well, I recognize that there are, you know, trying to uh, reframe it. Um, there are some positives that uh, many of us can take out of this situation or so. And it, um, they are somewhat along the lines of the things we saw in 08, you know, because okay. after 08, you had a lot of people that were saving more money. You know, it wasn't the whole ball to you fall attitude or idea because, they was like, this is reality. This can't okay. happen. And unfortunately, we're looking at it and it's happening again right now. All righty. Okay. So I've been watching my husband and my son and my father, how they're managing the quarantine and the stay in place orders. So what I really want to do with you today is talk about how different personality types of men are handling this quarantine. Are you on board for that? I'll try. You <laughs> okay. so I'll put the personality type on the screen and read it. Okay. And let's just kind of go back and forth talking about a casual conversation between two clinicians. Okay. Okay. All right. So here's the first one committed. So that's some, a man that is committed. Uh, he's okay with committed relationships and he's sitting in quarantine. What's going on with him? How is he dealing with all of this? I don't like this. Oh, because one of the, because one, one of the things is that sometimes, man, we, uh, we recognize or we establish ourselves by what we do, what we contribute to the situation. And so now if you have an individual who may be of a certain social class that's not able to provide for his family mm -hmm. and they're not able to um, make the necessary ends meet of what they saw or anything like that, if that's like on their top of their totem pole of things that they like to do, mm -hmm. um, they go to work, they go home, they make sure that their kids are well cared for, they make sure that bread is on the table or so. And it's a feeling of being helpless and powerless in this moment because they can't, you know, honor their uh, commitments in that sense. So it's very frustrating. It's very, uh, uh, and some, I won't say emasculating, but in some sense, man, it's just, you just feel like, you know, you just, what about my identity has been lost. And it's because for so long, this is what I've done. Okay. So what would be a tip you would give a, a, a committed guy, someone of this personality type? For one, one thing is, is that we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm -hmm. um, understanding your past, your history. Uh, also, too, looking at some of the things that we've had, because this is our first um, crisis within this uh, new millennium. I mean, we've had the 08 one as well, too. And kind of gearing back to the past, how did you make it over? You know, what are some things that you did? Um, um, 
the encouraging them to use their resources as well too because uh, sometimes okay. people we can become isolated and we can be silos into ourselves which okay. isn't good at, at all right so i'm the, educating and informing them to you know hey use your resources you know become bring that community into place so that you know you don't have to feel alone in this moment and okay. a lot of times i believe that when you start bringing in other ideas and other minds to kind of help you along those things, uh -huh. that's where the magic happens. I like that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So here's the next one. Okay. An emotional guy. He's a caretaker. He's used to controlling everything. How is he dealing with this quarantine? He's not dealing with this. Because <laughs> everything is out of his control. You know, uh -huh. you may feel a little, you may recognize a little bit of substance abuse in this individual. Why? Mm -hmm. Because now they are using the, the substance to kind of help cope with the, the lack of ability that they can't control. Okay. Uh, we can control, we can control when we get high, so to speak. You know, we can control the alcoholic drink, anything like that. But as far as when we're going back to work or as far as when we are told that we have the a curfew, we have no control over that. As okay. say, it's like, again, being defined by what you do in that sense or so like that. So now he's turned to some other type of substance. It doesn't have to be uh, a substance, uh, alcohol or anything like that. It could possibly be online gambling or it could be pornography or it could be a lot of little different things to help him cope in his mind that he still feels he has a, a level of control. He has a level of sense of power in this moment. And so for him, I guess a tip would be to find a help <coughs> outlet versus something that could be destructive in the end well one thing is is that you got to get creative with it. you know you're going to have to as a counselor as a clinician um one of my opportunities my jobs is to kind of try to help him uh look at different other avenues other things that he has never tried before so okay. for instance again once I mean, one of the things about this whole uh, crisis is it's forcing us to think outside the box Okay. It's forcing us to uh, be and do things that we never have done before. I mean, some of us have never cut our hair or done our hair in a long time. Some of us have uh, haven't cooked a meal in a long time. We just right. eat out everywhere, anything like that. Right. And so it's forcing us to change along with the time. And that's what I would kind of advocate for him as okay. a coping mechanism is that to kind of look at other things that you can do and not be afraid of failure, but to try. Okay, that's right. Okay. Okay, so what about the guys who are not ready for a relationship and they're quarantined? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's found him a couple cuddle buddies by now. <laughs> just, just being honest, just being honest. Okay. I mean, right now he has his, uh, his pick. I mean, so, so there's something I've noticed lately, and I call it the, uh, the quarantine love, is that you have the guy who uh, randomly slides into different DMs of uh, women that he has dated in the past. Mm -hmm. So uh, the the proverbial "I miss you." Uh, where did it go wrong? Mm -hmm. um, what happened to us? Uh, th things along those lines. And I'm okay. saying to myself, it's like that guy has a lot of time to think about a lot of stuff right about now. Okay, you know, he he's evaluating his life. He's evaluating his choices. He doesn't have a lot of distractions to keep him busy. You know, Bumble can only do so much. Tinder can only do so much. <laughs> and so now he's just forced to be uh, sedentary, you know, still. And so what would you advise him to do? He has all this time on his hand. What would you advise him to do? I mean, one thing, again, it's like with the last uh, gentleman that we mentioned, again, is finding other things. One thing I, li I like to advocate to many of my male clients is self-evaluation. Okay. Uh, being able to uh, having a level of awareness about yourself and what you're doing and uh, finding ways to uh, build upon what you already know of. Find okay. a goal and, and find those important supporters and enhancers to help you get towards that goal. And okay. so once we've identified what the goal is and who are the supporters and enhancers, then we put the team together to do so. Okay. And now in this moment, that young man or that or the elderly gentleman can have, you know, that platform and plan because he has nothing but time to reevaluate this stuff. So know, as so opposed to being distracted. It would be on people like you or his his friends to hold him accountable and say, dude, don't waste your oh, time definitely. With the same stuff. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. Yeah, definitely. I mean that's, when, when they come in and talk about, you know, old flames and relationship, my biggest question, you left her for a reason. Or she left for a reason. <laughs> for a reason. Exactly. exactly. Okay, so here's <laughs> Needy and dependent guys, how are they dealing with quarantine? 
Uh, <sighs> yeah. Sometimes I look at those individual, individuals as uh, attachment <laughs> uh-huh. in the place in some situations. Uh-huh. Um, also, again, too, uh, that's a level of identity. You know, who are you? Who, who are you away from this individual or so like that? Those are some of the big questions I asked that guy. Um, what are you without this person or without this situation or like as a man, as a human being? You know, what are your likes? What are your dislikes or anything like that? And we're trying to find those things that are independent of other persons. So, okay. so now that we're looking and we're setting the platform and we're starting to discover and find these ideas or so like that, now it's time to do the work. Okay. okay. Now it's time to do the research. Okay. Does this, and, and again, a lot of this is trial and error. But mm-hmm. I'm like, you don't have nothing but time anyway. <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, I mean, where, where, where are you going? Right. So, I mean, the only thing that's open is the grocery store. So yeah. you have more time for self work. You have more time to invest in yourself. I mean, because Amazon still works, books still work, audiobooks, the library, on t- those things that kind of educate you so you can formalize, formalize your own opinions about what you need in this space and time of your life. If you can't tell me that as an individual that's dependent and needy on someone or so like that, we have an issue. And then, I want to make, yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to make, I want to make it clear, sister. It's like I'm not saying that a person has to be so independent or anything like that that they just, I'm, I'm, I, I got this, I got this because we, we like to do that. We like to puff our chest, chest out at every uh, beck and call about what we can do and everything like that. But sometimes in these moments, it's finding out what you can't do. It's, it's necessarily finding out, you know, where are some of your not so strong points are and okay. beginning to, you know, strengthen those areas. Okay. Okay. I like that. So, okay. What about the solitary phobic guy? What do you think about him? My thing is if they're on my couch or they've uh, contacted me via Zoom or so like that, they already have a level of insight that something is taking place uh, that needs to be um, better or needs to be different. So, okay. so one of the things is, is that it's community involvement, engagement to some extent, uh, resources, uh, helping them. Again, like I said, it's a, a journey of helping them to find, number one, what there is does this phobia lie? You know, what are some of the uh, symptoms and triggers that lead you to this? Where does the faulty thinking uh, come into play where you think isolation is the best case for you? Another thing is, is that also too, um, being isolated or so like that. My favorite question is, how is that working for you? <laughs> you know, I mean, how is it helping you to kind of benefit and separate yourself from that? Are you afraid of people? Uh, are you afraid or do you have poor boundaries? There's a lot of little different things that go into play with that a person acting in that response. So, so again, it's finding out some of their desires, some of their ideas, likes, dislikes, or anything like that. And then we try to match them up. Again, you have so much time right now. If right. you have so much time, then you'll be able to investigate and say, okay, well, I'd like to do this. So let's try. And then having another partner that is help holding you accountable along these times or so, I think that's beneficial as well. Because sometimes... Okay. A spouse just it's not, doesn't cut it because of that. Ah, uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. So, you know, you made mention of one of the personality types turning to drugs. What have you found, uh, I guess, in the mental health community? Because not a lot of people are talking about substance abuse. They were kind of fussing about keeping the liquor stores open and church, closing the churches. So I know, you know, in our area, people were kind of fussing about that. But what are you finding based on your work in, in the substance abuse community? Um, what I'm finding is, is that this is not the best recipe for success when it comes to people in recovery. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things that uh, substance abuse does is it isolates us because sometimes mm-hmm. shame and guilt. And so now because we're so isolated and a lot of times we're all in our head or also too, when you look at you know just the financial downturn because you can have a guy like uh, the committed person or the controller who all this time they've been doing and providing and you know this is their identity this is what they know but when their identity is stripped of them now it's like man they're in chaos internally and so what do they do they find something that's going to aid and going to soothe them they may find a drink or they may find a smoke or they may find that oxy or roxy or hydro and so with that saying is that there's plenty i mean one thing i tell people i said regardless of what type of recession or downturn you're in dope still is going to move you know it's still going to transfer i mean unfortunately right unfortunately it's going to move and so now because we know that it's so accessible it's easier and but also too with the advent of all this fentanyl and mixing and prescriptions so people are mixing things together you know to kind of stretch it and give the most bang for the buck unfortunately it has fatal consequences 
And nobody's talking about that. I guess, you know, it's almost like you have to deal with what's urgent. Like, yes. uh, you know, we're talking about uh, black people dying at a higher rate. And now yes. we need to address the substance abuse. And then we need to address the homeless community. And so right. there's there's so many different factions within this mm-hmm. COVID-19 pandemic that we're having a hard time keeping up with everything. I believe so. I believe so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just one of those things where it just... Uh, I want to say this correctly. It kind of uh, highlights some of our not so strong points. Oh, I, yeah. We we could have an entirely different interview on that because it, it's amazing how many deficits we have. And yeah. I think that's the wake up call here, especially when you think about us having a major election in November. That people need to really sit down and think about the power of their vote. Because it basically leaves us sitting ducks when you don't, when you when you vote on nonsense. Mm. So yeah, that's a, that's an entirely different episode. I'm not going to cross into that rail right now. So I know you're busy planning and stuff. You had a busy 2019. What's uh, on deck for you post COVID? Like after we get out of all of these quarantines and stay in place orders, what are you planning on doing for the remainder of 2020 in terms of mental health advocacy? Well, one is definitely again um, taking some of the lessons that I learned during this period, uh, being uh, having more level of self care. Okay. Um, also, too, um, just um, working on me, working on myself. I put okay. it as a clinician, you know, to kind of pour into all these different individuals on a timely basis and mm-hmm. not pour into yourself. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I've been guilty of that myself for a long mm-hmm. period of time. And you know, you just you just going, you're going, you're going. You see in clients, you know, you're having fun. The money is there and everything like that. And you just sometimes can get caught up in it where right. you're not necessarily taking care of home first. And right. also too, because I think it's like a, one of the statements is that I like to use is that you can't pour from an empty glass. Right. And sometimes when we're empty, you know, we're just, you know, just giving them, you know, just spots or just droplets or anything like that. When we're not necessarily, you know, doing the necessary the things that will help us um, be better people. And when right. you're a better person, you can possibly be a better clinician. Exactly. So that's one thing. Also, too, um, beginning to continue to craft my books or so like that, um, working on my uh, podcast and working on different um, materials or so. Um, ultimately, what I want to get back to is traveling again. Yeah. Because I can speak overseas, and I mean, I had some things that were slated this year. And so it's like, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> it, it was just one of those things. So, one of the things that, that I do is. Um, I work with uh, different coaches, um, different brain trusts to help me kind of uh, get my message and get my ideas together. You know, I, I bounce ideas off to different colleagues and maybe even you. And just seeing like, what do y'all think about this? What do y'all see? You know, give me a contrary thought about that. Because sometimes right. you know, one, uh, I guess what, myopic or one point of view where it just lines up in our eye, eye head about what we see. But right. that's the great thing about being clinicians is that you see so many different people from so many different our places and social economic statuses that you just like I didn't know this was happening. I didn't know that. So like that. And it kind of excites you in that moment because it can be an opportunity to bring us together as opposed to being divisive. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So tell people how they can find you on social media. I have a couple of things highlighted, but what else what else should people know and how to contact you? Um again, I'm available through IG um, um at Bush Counseling. Um James, um, James at Bush Counseling Services dot com. That's uh, my uh, email address, Bush Counseling Services dot com. My web page. Um, also, via on Psychology Today. You know, one of the few black guys says in a certain re- region of Tennessee, I'll stick out. And so, those are some of the th- <laughs> those are some of the things that you can find me on as well. Um, but yeah, very accessible. Um, I love talking to people. I love mixing it up. And so, I mean, there's a lot of things that I have um, uh, brewing you know, on the back burner that are being brought forth now because I have the time to actually see to them. Well, make sure you send it out to me. I love to share what other clinicians are doing because we're all in it together. I can promise you or I can assure you that after 20 years of doing this, it feels good to have a community out there that you know, believe, and embrace what you're doing because for so long we were isolated. Yeah. Uh, the first practice I had, I was in an office by myself, and, and, and I would watch movies on a VCR in between sessions. So that tells you how long ago it was. I know you're looking like what in the world? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, it feels. If you, good. Say, if, you say, if you put a, 
if you said beta, then I would have really laughed. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But no, we still have VCRs, and I had one in my waiting room. And this feels good. I, the, the community that we have online is amazing. That's how I yeah. found you on Instagram. So hopefully we'll stay in contact. Uh, let me know what you're doing. I'll certainly highlight it through my uh, mediums that I have. And I appreciate you spending this you know, time with me talking about men and how they're doing during this coronavirus. And hopefully somebody found something beneficial, and they'll share it with their special ones in their lives. Who else is going to talk about it? <laughs> I mean, yes, right. really want to talk about that subject or cause or anything like right. that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So you enjoy the rest of your evening. I appreciate you joining me, and I look forward okay. to talking to you again. All right, take care. Take care, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there you have it, James Bush of Bush Counseling Services, joining me this evening for a special edition of The Emotionality of Success, but we're focusing on men and their mental health during the coronavirus. So make sure you follow him on all of his social media platforms. As well, take some time to follow me on YouTube, Dr. Stacey Alexander, Facebook as well, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and you can find more information about the uh, different shows that I've had, not only this one, but other ones. They're all loaded up to my website at www.stacialexander.com. On that site, you can also find copies of my book, The uh, Balancing Act Family Guide, as well as the workbook that I developed for August Accountability. Again, thank you for joining me this evening for this special edition of Goals Don't Have Feelings with Dr. Stacia Alexander. I do hope we can continue the conversation because these conversations are what expand the conversations of mental health so that we can remove the stigma of mental health and everybody will benefit overall. So until next time, thank you and you guys be safe. <laughs>